Hello and welcome to Console Cowboys. So today I'm gonna to show you a completely different method of pulling functions out of the bytecode to get an idea what this unknown bytecode is doing. Last time we used a brute force method and that worked quite well. We did some lookups and we matched the signatures. What we're gonna do this time, instead of brute forcing it out of the bytecode, we are gonna disassemble the bytecode down into assembly language and then based on our knowledge of how that assembly language is going to use those signatures, we'll be able to parse them out quite accurately and then reuse our code from the last program to match what we found in the assembly with our signature database. And then we can do lookups online or if you turn that CSV file into a local database, you can utilize that and do the lookups offline. So if that sounds good to you, we're going to hop into it. Before we get into that, I'm just gonna say thank you to everybody who's been hitting me up on Twitter and retweeting everything, leaving me comments. You wanna follow me on Twitter, just hit my description below and you'll find the link there. Like, subscribe, all that stuff, it helps the channel and let's hop into it. The first item in our list is we're gonna disassemble the bytecode down to assembly language. We can easily do that with pi v masm, like we did in the last video on the command line by echoing it out, except this time we're gonna import the library to our Python file where we can run disassemble hex on our bytecode. So let me paste our bytecode in here from our chain link contract. And then what we're gonna do is once we disassemble this, we're gonna put it in a variable called disass that we can print out and take a look at because we wanna look at the assembly code and figure out how it's using those signatures because once we understand how it's using them, then we can easily parse them out and not have to brute force them within the bytecode. So let's do that. I'm gonna print out the disassembly And we'll take a look at that here. So here's our disassembly. I'm just gonna make this a little bigger so we can scroll up. So we see a push 13 with a hex value, but it's a little bigger than our four byte. We see a push six with a hex value, still a little bigger than our four byte there. And we see a bunch of small ones, but they're all related to different types of pushes, right? So push one is gonna give you that one byte here. And then you got push two, which is gonna be the two, et cetera, et cetera. So what we might be looking for is something like a push four right here. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So eight characters, four bytes, that could be one of our signatures. So maybe since everything we see that's pushing some kind of hex value is a push, we can just do a search for push four and pull all of our bytes out of there. So let's try that. But first, what type of variable is actually coming back into disass? We don't know. So let's take a look at that first. We can say type disass and it'll tell us what type of variable created from our disassembly. So this is saying it's one giant string. So we can't just parse for push four without doing something complicated because it's gonna find it in that string, but then there's a whole bunch of other stuff in there. What we really need to do is parse out each individual operation code with the data into a separate thing, such as one giant list of everything. We can easily do that because what's happening is these are on each different lines, and that's probably because there's a new line character after each one of these, so it'll say, Swap 15, new line character, invalid, new line character, push 13, new line character. So what we're gonna do is split a new line character and that will put it into a list for us instead of one giant string. So we could say dot split. And what we'll do is slash n and what's happening now is it's gonna look for that new line character after each one of these and it's gonna be a new list value, new list value, new list value. So let's take a look at what that looks like if we print it out now. And we'll also check what type it is now. So we'll see here, this should be a list. And you'll see that it is a list. So now let's actually print out the values. We'll just take this type off. And what we now have is a giant list that we can loop through and then we can grab everything that is a push because like I said, if we tried to say in string, 
the push four is in a lot of places in the string, so it's not really gonna bring us anything back useful. So let's do a for loop for instruction in dis ass. Let's print out something. So let's say if push for in instruction, let's print out this instruction. Let's take a look at what we get here. And this is actually a little different than what I was doing it, but I wanna see if this actually works. So let's print this out again now and we'll see what we get. Okay, so we are getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, and then here's an eight long. So we're getting different sizes. It's not always eight. So that isn't as accurate. However, it looks pretty accurate since most of these look like they're eight long, but we have a couple that are not. So what I was doing, I had modified this earlier and what I did is I said, okay, well, how long is this, right? So we're gonna have a push four here. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So this is six long. So what I did instead of the whole push four thing is I said, if length of instruction equal equals 16, why don't we print out the instruction? Cause that's basically gonna say that this is only 16 long, which is gonna be that push four with those eight bytes along with the zero X. So let's see what happens now. And what we see now is we got rid of those seven length ones and it looks like all eight length items. So that might be our function signatures, although we have some zero Fs and they're kind of repeating. So what we wanna do is take all these values and put them into a separate list but we wanna get rid of the duplicates and we also want to get rid of everything except for right here. And we can easily do that with Python slicing. So right here we have a list we created called signature from ASM and it's just a list. So within here, what we can do is anything that's equal 16, how about we put it into our signature from ASM.append and what are we gonna append? We're gonna append our instruction. We only wanna grab the last eight bytes of it. So what we can do is do a string splice here and we say we want negative eight. So we're gonna start at the end of this and go backwards eight and that should give us only those values. And then we'll just put a colon after that. And that should grab us only those values. So then let's print that out and see what we got. Print signature from ASM. So what's gonna happen here is we're gonna go through here, we're gonna grab everything with 16, we're gonna append them all to a new list, and then we're gonna print out that list. So let's take a look at what that looks like. Okay, so now we have a list of all of our values, but we need to get rid of these duplicates. So what we can say is, if the length of an instruction equal equals 16, and then we'll say, and instruction, and we need to do our string splice here so they match up, negative eight colon. And we wanna make sure that is not in signature from ASM. So all we're really doing here is we're saying, okay, if our length of our instruction is 16 and our instruction last eight bytes is not within our list already, we wanna add that in. And then now that should give us only one of each value so we don't have any duplicates because we don't care about duplicates when we do the lookups. So let's see what it looks like now. So now we have all of these, there's no duplicates in here, so that's perfect. And then let's do a count on that. So we can just say, instead of listing it out, let's say length and let's see how many we actually have in here. And then we can compare that to the link contract. So let's do that. So that actually has 12 right here. So now if we open up the link contract, 
What I did here is I went to our contract ABI, which shows us all the functions within the contract. And then all the functions are designated with type function. So if you search by that down here, you'll see that it's one of 12. So we might have grabbed every single signature that is in that byte code from our assembly language and these are gonna equal up. But how do we figure that out now? Well, we need to do our lookups online and make sure that the signatures that we grabbed are real signatures. We can first compare them to our local database to make sure that they're in there. So let's do that. Up here in our code, we're already importing our signature database and we're doing that by saying, open our signature database and each line of that database, let's strip off any bad characters like new lines and let's create a list of signatures. Once we have that list of signatures, we can check if the values that are in our assembly that we found match up to stuff in the signature database. We can easily do that right here by saying for every signature within our assembly language that we found, if that value is in our signatures database that we imported, let's print that out and see if all the values that we found in the assembly are legitimate and we'll be able to look up online. So let me run this and let's see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So every single value that we scraped out of the assembly language is actually something that's in the signatures database, which means it will retrieve a function for us. So we might have a very good accuracy here as our chain link contract had 12 values. So let's hop back in here and let's think about this. Well, basically all we need to do now is paste in all of our old functionality using this new value of signature that comes from the ASM and everything should work as normal. So let's do that. So I'm gonna paste this in here and then we are going to select it because the formatting is gonna be weird. So I'm gonna grab all of this and we're gonna hit control bracket and that'll slide it back, hit control bracket again. And now that error looked like it went away. However, we need to fix our imports because in the last one, we're importing Colorama, we're importing regex and requests, and we need all of that stuff now. So let's import that. Once we import that, all of our stuff should work because it's the exact same thing. All we were doing before was passing that signature value and it was looking it up online and then it was figuring out, you know, is that in the database? So. If we run this now, we should get the same results as last time, except with the 12 values, and hopefully all of these are going to be legitimate. So I'm seeing decrease approval, balance of symbol, transfer, increase approval, allowance on token transfer, those are all legitimate. Symbol, balance of, transfer and call, decrease approval, transfer from decimals, total supply, and then the only thing that looks a little off are these two right here. And if we look these guys up over on the website, we will search for that. So the first one says phrase not found. Let's grab the other one and we'll paste that in here. And I just wanna make sure that these don't exist. Okay, so basically, we were able to find 11 of the 12 functions and maybe one was counted twice in the ABI and we do have them all. I'm not 100% sure without ripping through there, but we have pretty damn good accuracy for just figuring out a new way to do things. Now, somebody else asked me, why is this important? Well, it's kind of twofold. One, you're now able to understand, okay, I can disassemble things, what is in here, you're able to figure out another technique to brute force things, and you have options for figuring out some knowledge about bytecode if you were handled it. So that's pretty cool. But more powerful than that is you understand now how things work, which means that you can see the unseen. What does that mean? You can find vulnerabilities that before you would be completely unable to find if all the knowledge you had was high level programming and you knew that that bytecode 
was sent on the blockchain when you coded something and deployed a contract. Now you can say, well, now I understand what that bytecode is, how it's constructed, how to rip it apart, how to gain knowledge out of something from nothing, and different ways to do that, right? You understand that there's signatures inside of that bytecode. You understand how to manually disassemble it and make sense of it to figure out how it's functioning if you had nothing else and you're able to profile it with all the functions in there and say, oh wait, this looks like an ERC-20 contract. So this is very, very powerful and this will enable you to find vulnerabilities where other people can't that don't understand how things work. So I hope that was very, very useful for you. If it is, follow me on Twitter and share all of this stuff out. I basically just figured all this stuff out on my own. I decided to show you today, much like I showed you the stuff yesterday. And I'm hoping it's useful to everybody else when I'm learning something that I'm sharing it out. It's a little off the path of the course that we're doing, but it's related directly to contracts and it gives you that deep understanding. So in the next video, we're gonna hop right back in the course curriculum and figure out how to sign transactions so we can use those to hack contracts. So I will catch you in the next video and have an excellent night or morning or afternoon or whenever you are watching this, wherever you are in the world. Have a good time.